In today's video, we're gonna check out some more creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Shit's getting weird. Part infinity. Scientists are turning to cloning, hoping to save a species of ferret. And so far, this is turning out to be a success. Two additional Blackfoot ferrets have been cloned. The first clone was born in 2021. Efforts to breed it have failed so far, so the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services hopes that these two new ones can keep the species alive. The original clone is here in Colorado, actually inside the National Blackfooted Ferret Conservation Center in Fort Collins. It was created using, or may I say she was created, using cells from a ferret alive 30 years ago. This is interesting. It is. It is very interesting. But I do have a couple questions, okay? Question number one. When you say not able to breed, what does that mean exactly? Like, what does that entail, right? Does that mean that the the male ferrets that were born naturally can tell that she's not el natural? Like, what does that mean, right? I, I genuinely want to know. Like, if you if you were connected to this in some way, please hit me up. I'd love to bring you on the podcast. I would love to talk to you. I, I, I genuinely want to know. Next question. How crazy is it going to be when they start doing this to humans? And I don't want to hear it. No, they're not going to do this to humans. Yes, they will. I'm sure there's been multiple cloning attempts. And it is a good question as to why are they not able to breed? Are they sterile? But I'm sure a lot of this kind of stuff is happening behind the scenes, including with humans. I think they're waiting to see how long will 8 billion people allow 100 families to control them. 8 billion people are being controlled by 100 families. Who are these families? These are the elite oligarchs that control the planet. You know, they literally run us. They tell us what to do, hear, see, smell, taste, touch, feel, where we can go, where we can't go. Don't cross over that invisible line because if you do, you know, you're illegal and all this other kind of crazy stuff. They're running us. And we are, governments are put in place to work for the people, but they got it flipped and they got us working for them. Right. And telling us what they're going to do to us if we don't listen to them. That's the opposite of what it's supposed to be. The reason why the world it is today, why we have this boot on our neck, is because it's because of us. We're, a, we're the problem. The 8 billion are the problem. Because we them. haven't elevated our consciousness to the level that... They're sharks. A shark smells blood, a shark attacks. Right. A shark is going to be a shark. How come we, as 8 billion people, haven't uh, stopped falling for these divide-and-conquer tactics and stop fighting each other over the scraps and realize who the real enemy is. While we're fighting each other, they're just cutting up the pie and laughing at us. Left wing, right wing, all the same bird, right? There's no such thing as a Democrat or Republican. Mm -hmm. The only thing that does exist, like I say, is a group of elite oligarchs that torture men, women, and children worldwide. Mm -hmm. That exists. Could you imagine if someone wanted to start war with another country and they're like, all right, we're going to start this war. And everybody just said, eh, I don't really feel like it. And everyone did that across the world. What would happen to those people that want to do these bad things? The problem is, is that there's other people out there that agree with these other people's tactics. And that's what causes the conflict. I don't think we'll ever have a world where there's not going to be someone overpowering someone. Because for some reason, people just like to have power over one another. The following video and set of photos was captured by a woman named Amanda in Palm Desert, California on May 3rd, 2024. They're truly remarkable. I mean, this is kind of eerie looking at these photos and video, but it's also interesting to note that when the big earthquake hit in Turkey, they saw the same type of cloud formations. Interesting. Take a look at this and tell me what you think.
with how bad the weather has been lately, I would be afraid that those are tornadoes forming. That would just scare me. It doesn't look like the winds are too hostile in these situations, but I wonder what they could be that's causing these swirl patterns or these indentations because they're really abnormal looking. Let me know in the comments what you guys think this is, what causes it, is it a weather effect? Could it potentially be UFOs just sitting in the clouds? That's a cool theory. Let me know what you guys think it is. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And for everyone that's not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Question for DK so that I can find it in your YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. This is genuinely so dystopian. These people are living on a different plane of reality than the rest of us. They aren't even affected by the same political and economic issues that matter to us because rich people will always have the means to circumvent them. War, abortion access, rent prices, sea level rise, extreme heat, food scarcity, these things don't concern them. What concerns them is who's on the cover of more magazines. Tickets to the Met Gala cost $75,000. That is a life-changing amount of money, and it is more than a lot of people make in an entire year. Not to mention the outfits themselves, which cost tens of thousands of dollars on their own. Celebrity worship is dying because people are starting to recognize that these influencers have the power to make legitimate, genuine changes to the world that we live in, but choose to remain silent. They've already gotten their bag. What do they actually have to lose by speaking out about what is going on in Rafa? Nothing. They have more than enough power, money, and influence to actually make a difference, but they choose not to do anything because they simply do not care. The very little activism that we actually do see from celebrities is typically performative, self-serving, and it is always surface level. And you will notice that it quickly disappears whenever it might jeopardize their sponsorships and brand deals. Anyone who can afford to attend the Met Gala is the 1%. They are by definition our oppressors because they hoard wealth that could otherwise be used for public good. And as part of the 1%, these celebrities and influencers play a very intricate role in perpetuating the status quo and economic system in our society. It is no coincidence that Rafah was invaded during the Met Gala. This was a strategic move by Israel to strike while America was enamored with the celebrities in Hollywood fashion. And when we put celebrities on a pedestal and worship them at these events, that means that we are celebrating the oppressive capitalist power structures that enrich them. The very same power structures that are exploiting the working class, feeding you poison at the supermarket every single day, keeping rent prices unattainable, and destroying the entire planet through climate change. Celebrity and influencer culture is a form of escapism that upholds the ruling class by feeding into political apathy and consumer culture, and it is a byproduct of capitalism that needs to be dismantled. I didn't even know until today that the Met Gala went on, and I definitely did not know that the Met Gala was $75,000 to get a ticket to. That is ridiculously expensive. Just to go to an event where you dress weird. I, I, I guess wealthy people are on a whole nother level than I would ever be able to imagine, I think, because that's a different lifestyle. Have you seen this clip? This is weird. Look at this chick's eyes. <gasps> what is that? <laughs> what is that? Can you, is that a TV glitch? What the fuck, dude? I knew planets could be bad, but not as bad as this one, 63 light years away. This is its real name, but it's nicknamed Reigns of Terror. The planet is bigger than Jupiter, and it is hauling it around its star, making a complete orbit every two days. And here's why this planet is awful. If I showed you this photo, you might go, Aw, it looks kind of like Earth. Wrong. It's tricking you. The wind on this planet is seven times faster than the speed of sound, which means if you stood on this planet, you would be blown in circles around it as the planet moved around its star. But that's not the bad part. It rains glass, and it rains glass sideways because of that wind. So if you were on this planet, you would be spinning around, getting impaled by shards of glass while the planet mocks your screams with the howls of the wind. Man, that sounds amazing, terrifying, and hard to believe. Don't get me wrong, for anyone out there that believes in science, I'm not saying I do not believe in science. I just have a really hard time believing that they 
they know this stuff so accurately. I know it's all a theory, but they really hold truth to this. And it's just like, that's so far away. We can't even see it. It's just a ball of light. You can tell me that there's glass raining sideways on this planet. That's crazy to me. But that's why I'm not a scientist. So, you know, well, let me know what you guys think of this. I know a lot of people do not believe space is real. So that's probably a big no. But let me know. Shout out to all of those TikTok videos that talk about if you're walking in the woods in Appalachia and you hear something or you see something, no, you didn't. Because I think that just saved my life last night. Story time. Excuse the garage. I'm at my parents' place. And this is the only place my dog is allowed, who plays a crucial role in this story, by the way. Um, he's a very, very good boy. And last night proved it. Huh. So my parents don't live in Appalachia, but they do live in an area that's a little more secluded. It's still a suburb, but it's pressed up against these hills with lots of untouched wilderness and coyotes are running through there all the time. It's just a little bit more rural. So I'm sitting in their backyard, which has this tall fence all the way around it. And the wilderness comes right up to that fence. I'm sitting there around the campfire. My dog is laying beside me. I got my laptop open and I'm writing my little stories. Suddenly my dog lifts his head, stares straight ahead at the fire, doesn't even like look around at the yard, stares straight ahead at the fire and starts to growl. All dog owners know that your dog has different types of barks and growls. Um, this was his warning growl. This is the growl he does when there is danger coming and he's telling it to back away. So immediately I'm like, buddy, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And then I hear a voice at the fence line. And it's not just any voice. It's the voice of a little girl. And it sounds like a creepy doll from a horror movie. It's got that kind of like mechanical quality to it. And it's kind of like muffled and garbled. <laughs> I'm still getting the heebie-jeebies. And all it does is go, hello? Just like that, just, just like that. Hi, just same tone and everything. Now mind you, it's midnight. There are not going to be any little girls wandering the woods at midnight. So immediately I was like, well, this is either someone who's going to me um, or it's something else. And what made me think it was something else was the fact that the voice said again, hello, only this time it had moved and it had gotten closer and I'd heard no footsteps. It was just, it was just floating closer. And then, mind you, my dog is still growling this entire time. For the next five minutes, that voice is just circling the fence line, going, hello, hi, hello, hey. Like, just, just like that creepy doll voice floating around the fence line. Um, and then suddenly my dog stopped growling and he put his head down and he went back to sleep and the voice stopped. Um, I thought, okay, cool, <laughs> that was weird. And then all of a sudden he lifted his head back up again and started growling. And then the sound of a ticking clock came from the bush directly across from me. Um, again, heard no footsteps, heard no rustling, just a ticking clock started in the middle of the night, in the middle of the woods. So don't know what that was. Um, but if anyone wants to hop in the comments and let me know, uh, that'd be great. Cause I, I uh, can't wait to go home today and I don't see myself coming back here anytime soon. <laughs> and a big shout out to my protector. Yes, big, big scary boy. I wonder what it could have been. If this is a real story, if she's not making this up, I really wonder what could have this have been. Could it actually have been a child just walking around in the woods in the middle of the night? Or, or could it have been someone pretending to be a child and just creeping her out? They were maybe like neighbors or just kids? Or was it a bird or something flying around mimicking people? And I do see some people in the comments of this video saying it was a Wendigo. Some people are saying that it's a skinwalker. It would have been really interesting interesting to catch this in the moment like if it really was going on for five minutes like she said then I would have had my phone out recording it and I would have had a flashlight out trying to see because you need to know what some of these things are sometimes you know let me know what you guys think it was if you even think the story was real guys I know I'm not the only one going crazy or whatever right I've been living here in the U.S. for a long time I was born and raised here and everything but bro it just gets to the point where you're like Everyone does the same fucking shit. We all 
well, obviously I don't work because I have a business, but as far as like doing the things that everyone else is doing, like it's so boring and so repetitive. There's no culture in America. Everyone's doing their own thing. It's, it's so, do y'all understand? Do you guys understand where I'm, where I'm going with this? Like, what is America nowadays? Everyone just does their own shit. Everyone has their own opinions or blah, 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 whatever the case is. But like, there's no fun. There's no fun. Everyone is depressed. Everyone is boring. Everyone is broke. Let's talk about that too. Everyone is struggling. A lot of people don't even have a thousand dollars in their name. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not here to throw off uh, or, you know, shade off people because of their financial situation. But just to let you know, how is it possible that we can live in the, in the most richest countries, right? Which is North America, but people are broke. Explain that to me. Explain that to me. How the fuck does that even make sense? Well, the government is corrupted. We have crooked leaders. Uh, uh, let's talk about the dollar too. The dollar is literally going to get terminated because of BRICS. All the shit that's going on and everything that's going on in the world, you guys don't even know what the hell's going on. A lot of these other, other countries, they want to terminate the dollar. You know, y'all you got to really do y'all's research. Why is everyone struggling? Because these jobs, it's not that they're not, well, yes, they're not paying enough. But the fact that they're only there to, to for them to just make their own earnings, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They can fire you any fucking day. Y'all got to really start thinking outside the box. Well, what's going to happen if this and that and this and that, like, you know, man, man, all, all this BS, bro. Y'all better start owning y'all's business. Y'all better start doing something. Because I'm telling you right now, America's in big trouble, bro. <laughs> it's in big trouble because, man, y'all be relying too much on jobs on, on, on all, like, I'm telling you, you gotta start a business. You gotta start doing some shit, you know? I mean, it's a little odd to say that people are relying on a job and then to say you need to start a business where people probably rely to work for you unless it's they you whatever nonetheless i have a theory that this country in particular and probably other countries around the world as well i have a a feeling that they like to inflate the dollar to keep us suppressed and they inflate it to the point where it finally collapses nobody can afford anything people really get hurt because their financial livelihood has been basically shut off. Even though big companies suffer from this, they're still doing okay. They're still very wealthy people. When the market starts to balance itself back out, everyone's like, oh, well, we can get jobs. We got to work. Anything is better than nothing. And that's what the people in power want. They do this on purpose to make us appreciate working again and to just work because now we're afraid to lose our job because we have to stay in this constant cycle of just making it. That's a really sucky way that the world operates. If that's really how it is intentionally being ran, I just have a feeling that is how it's being ran intentionally to make people feel like they need a job once they're capable of working again because they've absolutely ran out of all their money. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this because this can be a controversial topic. Did you hear the story about the woman who cremated her father, took his ashes, put it under a microscope, and she seen the universe? This is one of the images this lady seen of her father's ashes. It looked just like the universe or some type of star cluster. This is more images of our father's ashes. We are really star dust in the universe trapped in the physical body. This is why they say so above, so below. If you see stars above your head, you must know that we are also stars. We are made of stars. That's why so many of us say we are star seeds. I guess that's why they say from ashes to ashes, dust to dust, because we are really star dust. That's why spirituality is so important, because once you get your spiritual roots back in connection, you will understand that you are a star seed. You will understand that you can travel the universe. Whatever the stars do above your head, we can also do. That's why they say the universe is nothing but a big ass mirror. Because once you look up and see these stars, you are really seeing everyone that's walking around on this planet. People in your family, strangers, your relationships, they are all stars. When you look at images like this, it's like you're looking in a telescope, looking up at the night sky, trying to see what the universe really look like. The universe is not really out there. It's within. I guess that's what they mean when they say the kingdom of heaven is within. We are the universe. That's actually pretty cool to see if those are actual pictures of the ashes under a microscope. That's really thought inducing for me because it does kind of look like the night sky. It does look like you're looking out into space. And it makes me wonder, you know, it makes me theorize a little bit. What if 
when we look out into space, we're just seeing the ashes of giants. All of the stars out there, all of the, the, the celestial bodies, those are just ashes of giants that used to roam this earth, maybe other planets, but, but those are actually giants. The ash remains of giants, that is. That's a pretty cool theory. I like that. Take a look at this ring cam footage. At first glance, it looks normal. A man leaving his home, walking away, and then nothing. There is something. Look towards where he passes and stands next to the shrub next to his home. It's like he disappears. Some are claiming he's abducted. Others say maybe teleportation. He's a mutant. Others still say it's just a glitch. Either way, it's weird and do you hear the noise? It's an odd sound. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. It's probably a fake video, but it's pretty funny to see. I, I don't understand how the footage would have been uploaded if, if this person was abducted, unless it was a family member or something, but I'm pretty sure that this is fake. There's no way that just someone just went whoop out of existence. Have you ever killed an extraterrestrial being? Yes. So based on Mr. Kramer's polygraph examination results, uh, there are no indications that Mr. Kramer was actively attempting to deceive me or the polygraph examination. So Randy, go ahead and relax, remain still. We'll begin in just a moment. And the test is beginning. Are you now in Colorado? Yes. Are you currently a ranking member of the USMCSS? Yes. During your entire lifetime, have you ever violated any rules or regulations? No. Regarding your involvement in the USMCSS, do you intend to answer each of my questions truthfully? Yes. Have you ever killed an extraterrestrial being? Yes. Have you ever said anything out of anger that you later regretted? No. Have you ever physically been to a planet other than Earth? Yes. Have you ever been deployed on a 20 and back program? Yes. The test is ending. Remain still. So based on Mr. Kramer's polygraph examination results, uh, there are no indications that Mr. Kramer was actively attempting to deceive me or the polygraph examination. If you look right here, these two green spots right here and right here, those are where I asked him to lie to me directly and where I knew that what he had said was a lie. From my perspective, uh, Mr. Kramer does believe that he is telling the truth. What a validating moment. Absolutely. Well, I've always known I've been telling the truth, but I understand that not everybody else understands that, so I'm, I'm glad to have had the test now. I would, I would really like to know where this is from, what show is this from, or where where is this clip coming from, because this is just on some kind of random compilation channel on TikTok, because that was pretty interesting. Now, I'm sure to some people it's probably easy to fake a lie detector test to, you know, to probably figure out how to lie and get away with it. Those questions were pretty good questions for someone to just be able to say, yeah, I did that, and it just not say he was lying. What planet were you on? What aliens abducted you? I need answers on this now. Let me know in the comments if you know where this is from, because I would like to look a little bit further into this. Some days don't have chemtrails, right? Some days are clear. And really, the more clear days you get in a row, the more likelihood it is that you're going to get a grid pattern coming up. But this irregular pattern of appearance where you not only have no lines in the sky, but you also don't have the air traffic. Okay, listeners, feel free to look up at your sky. Look at that air traffic. See those days where there's nothing going on. And this irregularity in the appearance is, it's the clue. It's the first clue. Some of those images were Microsoft window backgrounds. But nonetheless, this video summed up my thoughts exactly. I've seen days just almost like how every one of these pictures were demonstrated. There's lines in the sky, some days it's really clear, sometimes the clouds are nice and fluffy. And then it's clear and the next, next day there's lines in the sky and weird wave patterns in the clouds. 
I see this a lot and it's like what's happening here why is there lines in the sky this was a pretty good video to show an example of I, things that I see every day I think it's just going to get weirder and weirder and weirder and finally it's going to be so weird that people are going to have to talk about how weird it is. I look for the invention of artificial life, the cloning of human beings, uh, possible contact with extraterrestrials, possible human immortality, and at the same time, appalling acts of brutality, genocide, race bathing, uh, homophobia, famine, starvation, because uh, the systems which are in place to keep the world sane are in utterly inadequate to the forces that have been unleashed. Uh, the collapse of the socialist world, the rise of the internet. What if allegedly the CIA knows where the Ark of the Covenant is? So this doctor wrote the CIA asking about the Ark and all that stuff, and this is a receipt that was sent back to him saying, no, we don't know where it's at, dog, sorry. Check this out. Project Sunstreak. Looks like they got the coordinates. Attained excellent sight contact. Doing very well with stage four structure. Viewer also exhibits the ability to keep AOL to a minimum. Target is a container. This container has another container inside of it. The target is fashioned of wood, gold, and silver. Similar to the shape of a coffin. This target is protected by entities and can only be opened by those who are authorized to do so. This container will, will not and cannot be opened until the time is deemed correct. This is on CIA.gov, just so y'all know. Yeah, I got some little notes here, you know, about it. Look right here. Boom, a little drawing. Yep, look at that. Oh, uh, just saying, man. Go to the container and open it and describe it as you go. On part two, I'm going to talk about the Knights Templar and where all the Ark went, where it's at. Now, now it's in the Middle East, supposedly, but uh, we'll get there. Which month produces the best looking people? Let me know in the comments down below who you think it's going to be before you watch the video. Without further ado, take a look. So in last place is actually June. So yeah, if you're born in June, that's absolutely gutting and you are apparently extremely ugly, so I'm sorry. Next, we then have July, then May, and then January. That actually surprises me, to be fair, because for some reason I'd just expect the summer months to be the best looking. I don't, I don't, don't know why. But May and July. Well, I'm July, so... Cool. Then it's November and October, and then it's March. Now we're into the top five, so comment down below if you're still in. In fifth place is September. Apparently, their people are pretty decently looking. Fourth place is December. I mean, you've got Christmas, so probably going to be, you know, unless you look like Santa. Third place is February. In second place is August. And in first place, the month which produces the best-looking people, apparently, is April. So, yeah, congratulations if you're born in April. Apparently, you're very good looking. So, yeah, let me know in the comments down below where you can and hit that follow button and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, I got second place. I'll take it. <laughs> Where did you guys rank on this list? It's a little off topic, but it's a fun little game. So if I had to describe what autism feels like to a non-autistic person, there's a few ways that I would try to. Now, it's so hard to put something into words that there just aren't words for. It's almost like trying to describe the color yellow. Like, you can't describe something that is subjective and relative to someone's own experience. But here's my best try at it. One, and I think this might be one of the most difficult things for me, is it feels like my senses are always at a heightened state. Like, imagine when you are feeling overloaded, when things are really loud, when stuff stinks, when things are just too bright, when textures feel bleh. Now multiply that by a hundred. And then there's days where you multiply that by a thousand. Even sometimes, like, I don't know, a hundred thousand, where I literally feel like my body's going to shut down because my brain is so overloaded. And another aspect of it is it's like, I was dropped here on planet Earth, but I didn't get the handbook for how to socialize. Like, I guess that comes normal for a lot of people, but for me, it's like, I can mask the best that I can to try to get a conversation going, which, one, leads me to feeling completely drained for weeks afterwards, and two, just feels super inauthentic, and three, it's just based on my own perception of my entire life of what other people do. And lastly, another way that I would describe it is I take everything in. 
I see the tiny minute details of everything. And I honestly think that this is both a blessing and a curse because I notice the littlest of little things. I notice the little tiny spiders on the sidewalks. I notice the patterns and the leaves. I notice the clouds, which by the way, clouds are one of my special interests. I love weather. But then also because of this, it leads me to start overthinking every single detail about every single thing, which then leads me down this spiral. So while there's no one clear way that I would describe how it feels to be autistic, these are just some things that hopefully neurotypical people can try to understand and try to relate and just try to see that us autistic people, we're humans too. We just have a different brain and sometimes the way that society is built makes things a little bit more difficult for us. Well, there's some autism awareness. I think that's always a good thing to implement into a video because sometimes people really do not understand how someone with autism feels in general. And I think that every, everything that he was describing pretty much makes sense for someone that's autistic. I think it's good to implement videos like these into these types of videos just to give people a little bit more awareness. There might be someone in their family that has autism and they act a little different and everyone's curious as to why they act different and that's the reason. So it's always good to understand how someone else that works differently operates. American coffee again. Big deal. China, all of Europe, and most of South America have government laws protecting their populations from mold and coffee. Mm. So I'm not making this up. This is a globally known issue. In the U.S., there's no law. Mm. And I've got on video somewhere the former president of the Specialty Coffee Association, the biggest coffee guys, and saying, oh, yeah, I was in Japan when they rejected a thousand shipping containers of moldy coffee. Mm. Like, oh, what do they do with it? He goes, we send it to the U.S. <laughs> where there's no standards. <laughs> like, I don't make this stuff up. I was on Rogan a while ago. He had a, a competing company that was trying trying to, uh, to move into the space of Bulletproof. Uh, he, he said, oh, Dave lied about mold. But no, man, I got 36 studies that I didn't pay for backing up what I say. And Damn. hundreds of governments believe what I'm saying, just not the U.S. Man, that really sucks. I don't like hearing that because I really enjoy coffee. That's like my secondary favorite drink in the world, aside from water. I don't smell any mold or anything in my coffee when I get it. And it's been a while since I ground up my own coffee beans, you know, from buying coffee beans at the store and grinding them up, not literally growing coffee beans and grinding them up. But I've never smelt mold in my coffee. My coffee's always dry. It always smells nice. Man, but I am a little worried about that now. Let me know in the comments if you're a coffee drinker and what type of coffee do you drink and what brand? Because if you think that you drink a really good organic coffee, let me know because I'm interested. And I'm not going to lie, my favorite coffee from store-bought coffee is like Cafe Bestello. I think that stuff is amazing. Probably not the best for you, but it tastes great. You ever wonder what kind of spiritual technology the rich, powerful, and elite organizations work on in secret? Those that have unlimited resources, time, and above-the-law leeway. Welcome to DARPA, the psychotic invasive branch of the Antichrist. Take two. Top 5 Bizarre Spiritual Technologies DARPA's Working On And don't worry, I won't mention the robots designed to consume biological material as fuel or nanotech that's woven into clothing that's wash resistant and can either monitor or send frequencies to Take 3 Since Project Pandora in the 60s which used microwave radiation to control human behavior Extreme efforts have gone to get inside of the human brain and they've been working on neurotech which is basically a brain interface with robots This brain-machine interface is the beginning of the cyborg generation or fallen angels in robot bodies like the Transformers type generation. Among other spiritual tech, here's a few more. Check out the Smart Dust, the world's smallest commercially available RFID chip. Been around for at least a decade. Smart Dust. So what is Smart Dust? Well, it's general purpose computing, sensors, wireless network, networking, all bundled up into millimeter scale sensor modes, drifting in the air currents, flex of computing power settling on your skin, ingested, monitoring you inside and out and can be pulse powered by radio waves. It doesn't require a battery. You can literally scatter this stuff like dust or embed it into a sheet of paper. And you know what the really interesting thing about this technology is? This was commercially released 10 years ago and you haven't really seen anything yet. Or synthetic telepathy, which there's patents for. Sonic projector devices, meaning sound, V2K, which is known as voice to skull. Also, there's the realm of dream advertising, which also has patents and is something that happens. All these Antichrist mind control patents. Take four. CRISPR super soldiers. Genetics technology plus processing and rituals to create invulnerable super soldiers. 
There's organisms that thrive on radioactivity, and there's already been experiments to insert some of these radioactive thriving organism, organisms into humans, as well as animal-man hybrid type of science. Various traits include heightened senses and tolerance, gecko-like climbing grip, breathing underwater, etc. There's implantable nanobiosensors. The idea is having biosensors implanted in the bloodstream to be communicated with from outside of the body or off-site. Using radio and EMF waves. Scanning and reading biomarkers. Probably monitoring everything. Probably straight on that one. And there's also the Avatar Project, which is basically uploading your consciousness. The alleged DARPA Avatar Project, a sentient world simulation run through a series of high-powered quantum computers. It has a digital twin of you inside of this quantum computer simulation. All for entertainment purposes, by the way. This is technology that can read thoughts in real time and feed them into the digital twin inside of the sim to predict your behavior and see it beforehand, as well as outcomes in the entire world. And also through the principle of quantum entanglement, they can also probably use it to put stuff in your mind. And don't worry, these are just a few. I didn't even mention shape-shifting programmable matter, flying boats, bullets that can be adjusted after being shot, digital tattoos, and visibility tech. If you think all this is crazy, this is only what they've admitted to. Hence the speculation at the intro, what's being done in secret. In close, it's always been about getting inside of the human body, inside of the human brain. That's what it's always all been about. The fusing of these fallen beings taking over humanity. DARPA with the Brain Initiative, Neurotech, Neuralink Science that Elon Musk is working on, and a slew of other agencies besides just DARPA. You see what time it is. If you research into it, you'll see that DARPA and CERN are both connected to the origin of the internet, and also where this technology comes from, and how humanity is being baited and led into these scenarios. Into the endgame where it's leading us all. The full-fledged matrix. Been the plan this whole time. The computer, this big box shrunk down to the phone, was always meant to go inside of your body. Think Mark of the Beast. And hey, they don't call it the battlefield of the mind for no reason. Make sure you're wearing your helmet of salvation. It's going to be a pretty crazy time once we start reaching that trillionaire status when we start getting a bunch of trillionaires in the world because you know they're going to start doing some really crazy, useless things that people are not going to be happy about but are probably going to go along with for some reason. It, it boggles my mind the things that people are able to create like the smart dust. That is wild to me. And if it really has been out in the market for over a decade, then who knows where and what it's in exactly and how much of it is around us already and we just do not know. Just for shiggles, let's talk about how the government is lying to us even more about aliens. Look, we all know aliens are real and the government knows they're real too. They're just playing in our faces. This is another example of that. It's called Kona Blue and it was a special access program that was proposed by Homeland Security. As of today, there are employees at the Department of Defense that are saying that this program is real, it's still ongoing, and that the Pentagon is lying about it. This proposed program would have had seven different centers. It would have had the Data Collection Center, Data Analysis Center, Advanced Technology Center, Experimental Centers, Consciousness Center, Medical Center, and Education Center. Data Collection, Data Analysis, pretty normal. I can get behind that, that there's nothing suspicious to that. It's when we get to the Advanced Technology Center that I start going, hmm. The very first line of that is to analyze recovered technology in collaboration with major aerospace and electronics corporations. So we have the technology. This was the program that was going to investigate the technology. The next thing that should catch your eye is the Consciousness Center. They're gonna expand on remote viewing and remote communication to communicate, to receive data, and transport across dimensional slash time space barrier. Once again, we have the government confirming that remote viewing was 100% real and they are still investigating it and they are still using it to this day. Please pause to read this paragraph right here, the justification for need. This tells you everything you need to know. The government knows what's out there and they know what we can do as humans. They're just hiding it from us. I find these CIA documents extremely, extremely interesting. The most interesting one for me is the remote viewing. I find that extremely fascinating. I have a feeling that a lot of people in this world can do it. It's just something that we have forgotten to do. And I know a lot of people think that it's not a good thing to do. A lot of people think that it's a, a, a an unholy thing to do, maybe a demonic thing. But I truly believe that if it's a talent that we have, naturally it's not something that we've just sought after and summoned with 
rituals or things like that, I kind of think it's something that we are supposed to be able to do. If that's being that God gave us that gift, or if it's just a natural occurrence that we just forgotten how to do, I, I think it's something that we're supposed to be able to do, and it, it's a good thing. But there's a lot of people out there that really think that it's a bad thing, but I really think that if we're capable of doing it, and if there's a God, God would not have allowed us to be able to do it in the first place. I think that it's something that we've just lost a long time ago and it's a part of that ancient technology that we have forgotten about but let me know what you guys think in the comments this is pretty big topic a lot of people have mixed feelings about it so let me know yours all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here as always if you found any of these clips interesting links are in the description down below I'm sorry the lighting is a little different in this video, I was having trouble with one of my lights, but I don't really mind the lighting too much. Let me know in the comments what you think about it, if you think that the other lighting effect was better, or if I should just leave it at this, because I think it looks okay. And as always, with that being said, have a good day.